Good morning, and welcome to my show. I'm your host, Danny Graham, and I both invite and encourage you to walk with me on the road to wisdom. Good morning, y'all. Let's walk. Thank you all for joining on another show. This is my 228th edition of The Road to Wisdom. I thank you all for coming. Today's question is, is, are you committed to God? Let me ask this question one more time. Are you committed to God? That's a very serious, it's a very direct question. And that's something that we all should ask ourselves. Um, the definition of committed is a certain decisions which are made <clears throat> in advance irrespective of the circumstance. Let me say it one more time. If you're being committed to something, to someone or something, that is a certain decision that you have made in advance, irrespective of the circumstances, wherever you do. If you decide to commit God, it doesn't matter what the circumstances may be, you're going to do it. You're committed to it. No matter how hard it's going to be, no matter how full of trials and tribulations, if you're committed to God, you're just going to go through it to the end. Another word I think, which is tethered, with two other words I think, which are tethered, tethered, tethered to being committed to God is also being having conviction. The definition of conviction is a strong belief or opinion based on confidence in God's word. If you have conviction for God and the Bible and his teachings and his doctrine, then that conviction stands in the definition of that is a strong belief or opinion based on your confidence in God's word. The last thing is if you're a Christian now, or you were a Christian back in biblical days, that persecution, Christians face persecution, which was way more severe back in the day than it is now in some aspects. And the definition of persecution is that it's the act of treating someone unfairly and cruelly because of their religious beliefs, their political views, or their ethnic origin. Now, I'm going to focus more on what persecution is um, religious persecution. You see that sometimes going on even today across the water over in Jerusalem and yes, you know, so on, all these, a lot of these other countries. But back in the day, Christians were persecuted. Some of the disciples were persecuted. John the Baptist was persecuted. Paul. Um, Elijah, Jeremiah were different people that were persecuted because of their beliefs, because of the things that they said, trying to promote Jesus and Jesus' word. When Jesus died and rose from the dead and he came back to the upper room, he gave the he told the power before he came back, he told his disciples that the Holy Spirit was coming to give them power. Give them power of the Holy Ghost and the power to raise the dead, to cast out demons, to do great things and great miracles like he did when he walked the earth. Now, I often want to ask that question. What if God gave us those kind of powers today? What if God gave 12 people those powers today? Would they use these powers for good or would they use them for self-gain and evil? I would like to say we use them for good, but in the world we live in now, man, it's it's a world now that that, it, that is so full of evil th thoughts and selfish thoughts and and the ideas of personal gain. I don't know if those powers be used for good. I think people would try, if you remember, the, and this is a very, this is a fictitious story in a fictitious character, but you remember Spider-Man, the story of Spider-Man? When he first got those powers, he didn't use them for good. Spider-Man used them for his own personal gain. He went to his wrestling match and he wore his mask and I think the thing was, if you could stay three minutes in the ring with this particular wrestler, um, that they would give him 500 bucks, something like that. So what did he do? He went there, he put his mask on, went there, and he was able to stay in the ring and, and just destroy this wrestler who was all muscled up and several pounds bigger than him, and he defeated him. Well, when it was after he defeated him and people went crazy, it was time for him to get paid. Well, the promoter didn't do what he said he was going to do. He still give him 500 bucks or whatever cost it was, prize money it was. He only gave him like 100 bucks. And this teased Spider-Man off. But while he was walking, Peter Parker was walking, 
to the elevator to go home. Uh, somebody stole all the money. And Peter Parker could have helped catch that guy that stole the money. But what he did, he let him go by. Guy got in the elevator and he got away. And the manager said, look, you could have stopped them, man. You could have stopped them. And he said, that's not my problem. Well, fast forward. Before Peter gets home, that same guy goes by either the house or goes by the area where Uncle Ben is at, Peter Parker's uncle. And he shoots him. And Peter Parker sees the commotion and stuff. And he goes up there. He looks down. And it's his uncle. And his uncle, before he dies, said his dying breath, with great power comes great responsibility. With great power becomes great responsibility. And Peter then goes and finds and captures the cop. I mean, the person that he um, that shot his uncle. And then when he catches him and looks at him, he sees it's the same guy that walked by that he could have stopped 30 minutes ago. But because he was angry, because he wasn't committed to doing the right thing, it cost him his uncle. Now, I still have to say this. With great power comes great responsibility. It comes a certain commitment. It becomes a certain conviction you're going to have. And there's a certain persecution you're going to receive when you start going against the grain. We, when we get saved, we feel powerful. And I felt very powerful. It felt like a peace and a calm over me that I could handle anything. I believe that was the Holy Spirit on me during that time. But the Holy Spirit can't stay on individuals that whole time. How we stay in touch, or how I believe we stay in touch, is that we read the Bible, we come closer to God, come closer to Jesus, is where the Holy Spirit comes on us from time to time. I don't, I, I can't sit here and say one way or the other that God gives people the same power that he gave back in the day like he gave his disciples. I don't know. I can't sit here and say that definitively. Um, I don't see anybody with a staff that's walking around that's parting the Red Sea, that's, that's turning sticks into uh, to snakes, that's causing plagues to come. I don't know that person. Um, the only person that I know that I've read about was Moses, who probably was the most influential person ever that walked the earth as it comes to Christianity. I believe he had the, the best relationship, the most one-on-one um, -on -one friend to friend relationship with God and anybody else. Um, but to be given that kind of power and that kind of responsibility, I haven't seen that in my lifetime or I haven't recognized that if it has happened. But I do know that the same commitment that God, correction, that Moses gave to God, that we can do that same thing here today if we choose to do it. A lot of times we're going to choose, we're not going to choose to do it because it's hard. It's hard. We discussed yesterday at church and Sunday school that it's hard. When you become a Christian, most of the time in the biblical days, God prepared you and did things because it's going to be hard. He had people change their names and try to hide their identity. Saul became Paul. Abraham became Abram. A lot of things happened. A lot of different prophets. And a lot of different people that were doing things for God. He changed their names or their names was changed. I believe in a an effort to hide them from persecution. Still, our Sunday school teacher taught us that instead of these people asking for relief like we do now whenever we come down with illness or we come down with any kind of bills or any kind of marital problems, any kind of family problems or job problems, we pray for relief and we pray for, Lord, please get us through this. The disciples back then who were imbued with this power of the Holy Spirit, they prayed for more boldness. Places they went to that was locking them up, stoning them. Some disciples and some of his followers had their heads chopped off, all different kinds of things, died very heinous ways. They prayed for even more boldness, even more um, fearlessness, to be even stronger. They were committed. They had conviction to serve God. They were determined, no matter what the persecution was, they were going to see it through to the end. My question today is, do we have that same commitment to God? It's easy to say when you're in church, when you're around other people, or things aren't as easy, correction, or things aren't as hard as it was back then. But right now, if you knew right now you had that you had potential to get your head be cut off or kill or stab your family member, would you be committed to God the same way his disciples were back in the biblical days?
or same way people were prophets were that God had in place back in biblical days. That's a question you need to ask yourself. It's one thing to be persecuted when people laugh at you, ridicule you, like some you see sometime will go against God's word and say that you're an old funny duddy or you or I can't believe you're God would do this or Christianity isn't this because there's a lot of two facedness, there's a lot of hypocritical stuff, there's a lot of this, there's a lot of that. That's one thing to be persecuted with words, but to be persecuted as your own life. You could possibly lose your life because you have this belief. That's, that's a horse of a different color. But I think in the end times, we're definitely going to be persecuted. Christians are going to be persecuted. And it's going to cost us our life or death. Mark of the beast, end days, Antichrist. When he comes, it's going to be just that serious. Are you still going to be committed to God? Are you still going to have conviction? Are you still going to be persecuted? To, to the point that it may cost you your life. That's what you got to ask yourself. That's what God is going to, 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 to ask you one day. Are you going to die for me? Like my son died on the cross for you. You, you have that level of commitment. That's something you got to ask yourself. I want to read to you three different uh, scriptures. One talking about commitment. One talking about conviction. One talking about persuasion. Um, the first we're talking about com commit is being it's, it's coming from the book of Psalms, the 37th chapter, the fifth to the sixth verse, and it reads as follows: Commit everything you do to the Lord, trust him, and he will help you. Let me say it one more time. Book of Psalms, the 37th chapter, fifth to the sixth verse. Commit everything you do to the Lord, trust him, and he will help you. You just need to read that when you talk about and think about being committed to God. Second scripture comes, which is talking about conviction, comes from the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter, the 38th through the 39th verse, and it reads as follows. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them who believe to the sulking, of the soul. Let me say it one more time. Hebrews 10th chapter 30 through 39th verse. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back with perdition, but of them who believe to the saving of the soul. To the saving of the soul. And the last um, scripture about persecution comes from 2 Timothy 3rd chapter, the 12th through the 13th verse, and it reads, Yes, and all into who live and all who live godly in Christ, Jesus, shall suffer persecution. Let me say it one more time, that first 12th chapter. Yes, and all who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Say one time, but the evil men and seducers, one time the Bible uses seducers, shall be wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. In the end times, God said there's going to be a lot of deceivers, a lot of things that's going to be worse than we ever seen before. That people are going to deceive and be trying to seduce people and do things that are not godly, that are not godlike, that are not in God's doctrine. Christians are going to be persecuted. People that are going to be trying to do the right thing and be persecuted. And a lot of people are going to be deceived. Though. They're going to think that what they see is real and it's godly, but it's not godly. It's going to be a time of the okie doke. You think you got one thing, but you really don't. That you can really have something else. That's not what you think it is. You have to pray for discernment. Pray to have the extra, that sixth sense, <clears throat> that connection to God. That when you see something and you hear it, 
you're like, mm, that don't sound quite right. Let me pray on that. Let me ask for discernment. Trust that little voice. Trust that pit in your stomach. Trust that whatever it is in your shoulder. You trust that voice. And you pray. You ask God for, for discernment and clarity. Just my two cents for that on that word committed and the two other words, which is persecution and conviction, all tied together. Committed, being committed to God, having a conviction to serve God, and going to be persecuted because of your commitment and conviction about God. I'll leave you with a quote. And the quote says, When we trust and delight, and commit to the Lord, we can find peace in his plan and be okay even when life isn't going how we would dream it would. Let's get one more time. A quote about commitment. When we trust or delight and commit to the Lord, we can find peace in his plan and be okay even when life isn't going how we would dream it would. Very deep, very profound. Now, as you all know, sometimes in life, you're going to come across some people. You're going to come across some people. You're going to come across some people in life that challenge you. These people that will challenge you are going to challenge your commitment your conviction and they're going to try and persevere you and ridicule you on top of that but you as a Christian you are armed with the most powerful weapon known to man and that's the word of God it's up to you whether you decide to use that word of God to learn that word of God and to use it as a shield and also as a weapon against all this evil that's going on in today's world. But when you encounter these people with that evil, with that bad spirit, you tell them something like this. You say, hey, look, I choose to believe the Bible because it's a reliable collection of historical documents written down by eyewitnesses during the lifetime of other eyewitnesses. They report to us supernatural events that took place in fulfillment of specific prophecies and claim that their writings are divine rather than human in origin. They come from Pastor Bodie Bacham. He's a pastor that I follow from time to time. You can find him on YouTube. He's an amazing, amazing pastor. I hope that you got something out of today's lesson. And I want you to ask yourself, are you committed? Will you be, will you go through persecution for God? Will you stick to your conviction to serve and honor God? That's a question we all must ask, myself included. I hope that we all will be committed to God. I hope that we all will stay committed to God. And if there's any kind of persecution, we'll be able to endure that persecution. I also think we need to stick to our convictions. I hope that we all stick to our convictions because we live in a world now that's trying to change that conviction. You refocus it to something that is not God's doctrine. So please make sure that you pray for discernment. You continue to follow God's word. Until Wednesday, I hope you have a fantastic day. And as always, God bless you. Danny Grammy speaks so clear. Love thy neighbor, hold them dear. Bible wisdom every day. God's on path, the only way. On the road to wisdom, right? Follow God through darkest nights. Bible's words are guiding light. Marching forward with His might. Hear the stories from above. Jesus' power, pure is love. Trust in Him, no matter fall. Grace is here for one and all.
wisdom bright Follow God through darkest night Bible's words are guiding light Marching forward with his might